So by now, you should have a sense that our schedule will run new learning on Tuesday and new learning on Friday with a review of previous learning on Monday and a review of previous learning on Thursday. So I'd like to talk to you right now about some new learning, what you should be doing on Wednesday, and then what's going to be due on Thursday. So on Wednesday, I want you to have completed your first prompt drawing and start your second, and then you will continue to collect your data. Then on Thursday, I'm going to ask you to hand in a photo of your data collection and then hand in a description of how you're going to show your data, but also why showing it in the way you choose will reflect your data well. Then also on Thursday, you will continue your second prompt drawing from our list. So your photo for Thursday should not replicate exactly this, but it should be a snapshot of the data you've collected from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And these examples that I shared with you previously show you how other people have collected them. Yours will look different than this. That's fine. But as long as you have a picture, it's a way that you can communicate to me that you're keeping up with your collection and you're doing it at a regular pace. But for your new learning, I want to revisit a couple artworks and look at them through different eyes. This work by Lori Frick is like a bar graph, but it's not. It's translucent pieces of plastic stacked and arranged by size, by color. And they're very, very helpful for us because they give us a very different take on what a relationship is. The stacking of them looks precarious. It could be knocked over at any time. And so it tells a much richer story than a regular bar graph would. The worried beads example, where the data from the terrorist attacks from 1945 to the present are shown, is a transforming of a fidget into a data visualization. The woven data from Fitbit and Mood data, or this one which shows glacial melt as a, as a traditional graph, but it's watercolor painted in to show the glaciers and their melting. And this one shows hurricane data, but it's all done with fabric and paper. Student examples where data is transformed into birds by color and size, conversations into bubbles. And this example of a map of Franklin and where the music was in the student's mind. So my encouragement to you is to look at your data, but come up with a creative way to display and communicate your data. That's not a traditional bar graph not a traditional map. Can you use things that are around your house? Can you physically make a stack or a pile of something to show your data? Can you think of a unique way to change a traditional pie graph, bar graph, or some kind of map to tell the story that you need to tell? That's the question for you between now and Thursday. And what I'm looking for is for you to flex your creative muscle, not just your traditional visualization muscle with this assignment. So just to recap, on Wednesday, you're going to finish your first prompt drawing and start on your second. So looking at that list of words and bringing it back. Then you're going to continue your data collection. On Thursday, you will hand in a photo of your data collection, which includes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and some of Thursday, depending on when you hand it in. And then you're also going to hand in that written description of how you're going to show your data and why that visualization is going to reflect it. Based on the slides I just shared, we're looking for 
a creative way to show data that could be physical, sculptural, it could use non-traditional materials, or it could be a way that you transform from a traditional kind of visualization that you already know how to do. Then on Thursday, you're also going to spend some of your time continuing on your second drawing prompt. So here's that prompt list again. Well, stuck, odd, open, loom, freeze, plunge, light, twist, stretch. And then a quick peek again at what Wednesday will look like. So you will pick your second prompt word, brainstorm the word using both the definitions, using um, synonyms, and then you can start on that drawing on Wednesday. You'll continue your data collection and then do the thought work of deciding how you're going to show that data well really making an effort to show it in a new and creative